Hey guys, day 44. So day 43, you heard about, um, really not much. Day 43 was Monday, nothing happened. Tuesday was a little different. Uh, Tuesday I woke up extremely cranky. Um, I've not been sleeping well. I've been having nightmares. Uh, when I'm not having nightmares, I'm, I'm still barely sleeping. And um, just something something's going on, I don't know what. But So day 44. For, I'm, I'm not really in a good mood to get begin with, especially going into work, putting in, putting up with people's shit today. And um, but I'm like, okay, I'm here, I'm having coffee, it's cool. I'm running late, um, overslept, and I turn the alarm clock off, pass back out. So I'm in a bad mood, bad mood. But I'm trying to be better, like so I'm having my coffee, and I get told our vendor has essentially just put a three month. Um, hold on our project because they decided that all the promises they've been making for six weeks, all the extensions we've given them, everyday conference calls that we have when we ask them, how are you doing? Is there anything we need to know about? Is there anything you want to tell us? No, everything's good. Everything's good. Yep. We're on, ta we're on task. And a week before pilot and we're told, damn dog, we just ain't got it. I don't know what to tell you. Um, Call back in December and we'll, we'll have something to show to you. All right, look, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be straight up honest with you. I have been on my best behavior here. Okay, I have done everything I can not to step on people's toes, to sit back and listen to everybody completely before speaking, um, expressing my opinions very politically, very very gently, uh, proper channels by you know talking to my liaisons and my bosses here and hey I think we really should reevaluate and try to respect everybody's position and things that if I'd have done in the US I'd probably be three grades higher by now but in the US it's a different story right um, but but I, I was trying here and I'm gonna tell you I, that all went out the window I, I went straight old-school Rick Kendall US kick in the door, foot in the ass, and let the chips fall once the dust settles, okay? And I lost it. I got on the con I got on the conference call and I went off. Um, I gave them every freaking reason in the world why this was unacceptable from all their current all the delays they've already given us, all their broken promises. So needless to say, Tuesday was really starting off. I mean really damn bad. But we're not here to talk about work. We're here to talk about you know a culture, a culture in India and how it's different from the U.S. So let me tell you what happened Tuesday for that aspect. So I'm all upset and come to find out it's what they do here, and may, I don't know if it's everywhere, but at least um, at Kellogg we we actually hold a once a month celebration for all the birthdays. So the month end. Uh, they called in a called the celebration. They had cake and drinks and uh, get everybody in the office together in in the cafeteria. And they get them all up front. They get them next to their cake. They sing happy birthday. And then what they actually do is, which is much different than you'll ever see in the U.S., is the, the birthday people will typically feed each other. Which the the eating habits here in India are a little bit different culturally. Uh, everybody eats with their hands or spoons or you don't use a fork you barely use a knife um, typically it's hands and everybody shares a dish shows up to lunch everybody throws everything in the middle of the table everybody chows down everybody gets a good full meal it's a very inviting and open uh, eating arrangement and I, it's kind of cool it really is and I really wasn't a, you know interested in doing it when I first got here because one, I had no idea really what Indian food was like, and just not knowing people, not my thing, right? But, so back to the birthday celebration. So, everybody's there, they're, they're, they cut the cake, and they start feeding each other, and then all of a sudden, it's an all-out food fight. I mean, so apparently the tradition, whether it's here in Kella, it's actually in, in India, because now that I'm thinking about this, I've seen this twice before, and I'll explain that in a second. But so everybody first gets their cake, they have their, they have their, you know, eat their bite. And then they grab another piece and they smear it all over the, the birthday person's face. Now, 
an individual person, huh, that's kind of that's kind of funny. When there are seven people that are celebrating their birthday, it's a food fight. Okay, it's a straight out food fight. And I mean, they were in guys' beards. Uh, this one chick, they must have hit her like three pieces of cake, man. Her whole face. Look, I can say what it looked like. A chick frosting all over the face. Y'all get the drift. All right, you know what I'm saying. So, um, it, it's wild. I mean, it's it, it's kind of like, oh, that's actually kind of funny. Um, you know, we do it We do it in America when we get married. You know, it's the, hey, feed each other, feed each other the wedding cake and it squish on your face. But they do that for birthdays here. And... First, for a moment, when I first said I first decided this was going to be the story I told, I didn't even think about this. But when I was at the Rainforest Cafe, about I don't know, go back to the videos, it's in there. Uh, but when I was at the Rainforest Cafe, there was a person celebrating a birthday, and they actually smeared the cake on that guy's face too. And I thought, oh, you know, a bunch of young kids and friends, they're just, you know, really screwing with this guy. They're all drunk, no big deal. But I think about it some more, and they were having a birthday at Papa John's. They did the same thing. Uh, KFC a few weeks ago. So th this obviously is a culture thing here in India where, like, again, when Americans get married, they feed each other the cake, and then they smear it on their face. So um, it's actually kind of cool. It was kind of a more – it was a much lighter portion uh, end to the day for Tuesday than how it started. So – and that's day 44. I mean, it's it's constantly something new here. So, uh, shit, day four. Oh, you know what? There's something else about day 44. So, hopefully you're watching these videos in sequence. I actually recorded this once and then decided to go back through it. But uh, the other thing that happened at day 44. Inadvertently, the fire alarm was tripped. And by itself, you know, a false alarm is a false alarm, no big deal. But at first, no one knew it was a false alarm. So we had people that were kind of running around, okay, sensors going off in this area, trying to see if they could tell if there was any smoke or smell fire, you know, whatever, and uh, start to evacuate the building. Well, since no one really knew what the hell was going on, some people were being very cautious, they were evacuating. That's fine, right? We're on the 10th floor, you evacuate, fire, you don't know if it's drill or not. If, if people aren't saying it's not a drill, you, you shouldn't be taking the shit serious. So people are kind of hesitant, but at the same token, human nature kicks in and people got stupid. Now, what is the first thing they tell you to do, not to do when there's a fire in a building? They tell you don't get on the fucking elevator. There are signs that say, in case of a fire, do not use the elevator. I bet you there were 15 guys sitting in the lobby pushing the elevator button waiting for that damn thing to arrive. Now look, I've been through enough fire drills. I know that you know the procedure. You don't get on the elevator, you locate the nearest exit. If you're not in charge of making sure people are getting safe or it's on it's not safe for you to, you know, assist everyone else then at all else fails you protect your own life. I saw the fire exit sign. I was heading towards the exit. We got all call back in. Oh, it's just a false alarm, false alarm. So people in the lobby, oh, phew, good thing, you know, the elevator wasn't here yet. Asshole, you're not supposed to take the elevator. You're dead, okay? You are dead. Why? Because you waited for the elevator during a fire. Whether it was real or not, you waited for the elevator. And if you even got on the elevator, it was probably going to lock itself down and freeze. You're going to get stuck in the elevator and the fire is going to be burning around you and the building is going to burn up. Your ass is going to be burned up in the damn elevator. Get your shit together. This is why people get dead. Okay, that's all I'm saying. Stupid asses. <laughs> um, yeah, but, you know, in all honesty, it's not, it's not whether they're being stupid or not. Panic. Panic will kill you. You don't think properly. You, you go into your first reaction. The first reaction is what do you do? Oh, you leave and work. You go get on the elevator. So first reaction, fire, you need to leave the office. Everybody's waiting for the elevator. And... I guess that wasn't even the worst part. Then the damn fire alarm kept going off like every 10 minutes to get to figure out what was wrong with it. But it, it just goes to show that even no matter how you were raised, what your culture is, 
panic will set in and your first instincts will typically take over and if you're really not prepared you're really not thinking you're gonna get yourself killed um, in everyday life obviously fire car accident traffic accidents uh, scuba diving you know anything you do you have the potential of getting harmed if you're not paying attention and if you're not thinking so that's my PSA for the day too so Indian culture blow up at the office and PSA stop think react okay stop panicking think about the situation then react otherwise you're dead watch day 45 there's a whole other story that goes along with this because apparently this was a whole two-part process now. Um, you'll understand even more, but uh, Day 44 in India, you know the drill. Subscribe, like the channel, share the video, leave your comments, questions, and uh, we'll see you back in the U.S. Peace out, guys.